Hi, in this second oscillations lecture, we're going to look a bit more at simple harmonic motion. So we'll actually be deriving the equation for pendulum motion that you used in one of your laboratory sessions early in the semester. After that, we're going to have a bit of a look at damped and forced oscillations. This lecture is going to cover textbook sections 15.3 to 15.6. First of all, a quick recap of the most important ideas from last lecture. Simple harmonic motion is a type of periodic motion where the force is proportional to the distance from equilibrium position and directed towards the equilibrium position. So we saw that a spring with Hooke's law undergoes simple harmonic motion. We saw that position is equal to A cos omega t plus phi satisfies the equations for simple harmonic motion. So we can use this to describe the position of a body undergoing simple harmonic motion. Taking the derivative, we can find the velocity, and taking the second derivative, we can find the acceleration. So you can see from this line that the acceleration is equal to minus, the a cos omega t is just x, so it's minus omega squared x. Okay, so the acceleration, according to Hooke's law, for a spring is minus k on mx, and for simple harmonic motion, this is equal to minus omega squared x. So omega squared is equal to k on m, and so omega is equal to root k on m. Now we also showed that omega has the normal meaning of 2 pi f, which is 2 pi on t. So this gives us the relationship between the spring constant, the mass, and the period. We also saw that in simple harmonic motion, energy is conserved. We showed that the total energy is equal to a half Ka squared, and the kinetic energy is a half mv squared like normal, and for a spring, the potential energy is a half Kx squared. So this equation gives us a quick way to find the velocity of an object undergoing simple harmonic motion if we know the position and the amplitude. Okay, on to new material. We're now going to be looking at the link between simple harmonic motion and circular motion. If you imagine an object undergoing circular motion and then looking down from on top, looking at the projection of the shadow of that object, the projection is actually undergoing simple harmonic motion. So this demonstration is going to show you how the projection of circular motion goes as simple harmonic motion. So if I turn this handle at a constant rate, you'll see the little round dot move around in a circle in the constant rate. This white ball at the top is going to track how high the white dot is here. When I move this at a constant rate, then this ball at the top is moving with simple harmonic motion. We're going to prove that now. So imagine point P here. It makes an angle phi with the x-axis. This is a circle. The radius of the circle is capital A, standing for the amplitude, but it's also the radius. The x-coordinates of point P are given by A cos phi, as this is the adjacent side to this angle. The y-coordinates are given by A sine phi. Now we want to consider the case where phi is actually changing with time. So phi is our initial angle. If we want P to undergo circular motion, then it's going to travel around this circle at a constant rate, and its angle will give him, be given by theta is equal to phi, the initial angle, plus omega t. Okay, now let's consider the speed of this particle. The particle is undergoing circular motion, so its speed, v, is given by omega r. In this case, the radius is capital A, so the speed is omega A. Now, we're just interested in the x component of this speed. You can see it's back towards the equilibrium position, so it's in the opposite direction to the position. Hence, we've got a negative sign. So the speed, here's the angle theta, this angle here's theta, this angle is 90 minus theta. So the speed is given by v sine theta, which is equal to minus omega a sine theta. And so remember, theta is just omega t plus phi. 
So the speed, the x component of the speed is minus omega a sine omega t plus phi, which was the same as what we had for simple harmonic motion, showing that the projection of this motion onto the x axis is simple harmonic, mo simple harmonic at least for the velocity. Let's finally consider the acceleration. As you all know, acceleration is directed towards the centre of the circle for circular motion. So the acceleration is given by v squared on r, r is a, which is omega squared a, substituting in v equals omega a. And now consider just the projection of the acceleration onto the x-axis. This angle in here is theta this time, so we have a cos theta. So the acceleration is equal in the x the x component of the acceleration is equal to the total acceleration times cos theta times a negative as it's in the negative x direction. And so we've got the acceleration in the x direction is equal to minus omega squared a cos theta, which we can write as minus omega squared a cos omega t plus phi. And this is the same as the acceleration for simple harmonic motion. So the projection of an object undergoing simple harmonic so the projection of an object undergoing circular motion onto either the x or the y axis undergoes simple harmonic motion.